lot of the insulation. Um, we got some Havoc or Havelock wool we're going to use. We've got two inch insulation boards we're going to use. We've got one inch insulation boards, half inch insulation boards. Great stuff foam, so we've got lots of materials to do it with. We're just going to kind of go in here, find the spots that need it, right over here, fill it in. Probably fill this with great stuff, maybe stuff wool all in these areas. Um, so we're going to use a mix of those three things, so check it out. can't really be wool as a form of insulation. Uh, it's natural, so it's sustainable. It's very easy to install, especially for these tight places. Um, it's non-toxic. It's naturally uh, moisture resistant. So a lot of people have locked wool. Have locked wool is where we decided to get ours from. A lot of people like them. Um, I'm happy with it so far. We're not doing our whole van in wool. There's people who have done that. Check, check YouTube, you'll see it. But this is really great for these spots because I literally can just push this in here, stuff it as much as I want, and then if I ever need to take it out or anything, it's easy to remove also. So it's very easy to install. Um, it's got a pretty good R value. So yeah, I would recommend it. Okay, so Allison fit all these boards in here, these two inch insulation boards. Now we're using great stuff to, we're gonna hold it in place with great stuff, but also uh, add some insulation. We're not gonna do all that gap. We're gonna put some wool up there too, but yeah, this will just be to help hold it in place. Well guys, it's coming along. Got some of the big insulation pieces done today. I just cut them out of two inch ISO board. And then used great stuff to fill in the cracks, which will also hold them in place. We're gonna stuff wool and some other stuff in these other big gaps. We don't really want to use the great stuff for like all these cavities. Instead, we're using wool for that. That's wool. That's what we'll use for the rest. Not bad. It's coming along, guys. Hey guys, if you look at this mess, my goodness. But, I um, started building the bed frame a little bit. Uh, I still have to put these panels in before I can fully put it in, so I just bolted them in for now. Um, using the rivet nuts, which are really freaking cool. I got the rivet nut gun, um, so they're really easy to install. It makes it so that I don't have to put any more holes in the van. So I'm trying to use those as much as possible. I'm gonna bolt this in four times here, right into the band frame. I'm gonna bolt these legs all in too. Um, build some cross beams. And right now what I'm working on is I'm gonna cut this little piece out. And this is gonna make a kind of nice flush frame look, uh, I hope. I'll show you what I mean in a second, but it's exciting. This is the, I think they're called rivet nuts. This is a rivet nut tool, that's why I think that. But basically, I can use this tool to create uh, nut inserts in the side of my van here. So I placed this one in right here, just using one of these holes. Put this in, use this tool, pinch it, and it locks it in there. So 
that's how I'm going to try and do most of the walls and framing for the van because I don't want to screw into the van, just right into the van like a lot of people do. Uh, over here you can see I've already, using those two of the rivet nut places, I bolted one of these pieces to the wall just temporarily so I can try it out. The way that I got that was with one of these. They're called hanger bolts. Um, essentially one end screws right in and the other end is pointy so I can mark the wood. So I already did the outside too because I only have two of these because I didn't want to buy a whole bunch. I only bought two. So I did two first. Now I can line up that piece of wood and press it really hard and it's going to mark these two spots so I know exactly where to drill. So this is useful as well. So these are the two holes I uh, drilled earlier. I'm going to just match them up here so I make sure that they are right where they're going to be. And I can press. And now I have, probably can't see it on the camera, but I can see it, two places to drill the other two holes. Nope. <laughs> no, right here oh. and right here. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see. But now I know where to drill. Official. We finally have the first wall, well it's a panel, in the van though. Looks pretty good, wasn't too hard um, lining up these, but still a little difficult, but I think it looks great. Gotta do the other side now. So I'm trying to put together the bed frame. I've never done anything like this before and I hope this is going to work. I have watched some YouTube videos. Um, but because of a time crunch, we're trying to get the bed done by this weekend for a trip we have. Don't have a ton of time to research it, so I'm feeling slightly incompetent, but um, basically my plan is right now I'm attaching this L bracket here. Uh, I've got a bunch of these. This is my one of the crossbars. Um, I made sure it lined up and fit perfectly here before I screwed that in, and I made sure it was straight with this and this. Then I'm going to glue it, screw in on this side as well, and then put two long screws right through here. Uh, I'm going to do that for both sides. Hopefully that will do. Insulation. Um, what we're going to try and we're going to see if it works on this back panel. You come here. I cut um, about two inch strips of the half inch insulation board and I put it in between the ribs here. Um, I just spray it, use a spray adhesive, the 3M 9000 or whatever it is, um, or 90, that's what it is, high strength. So I used that and I stuck these up here. Since they're so light, I didn't really need to use anything. I just sprayed and pushed on them and they're stuck. So now that it, we've got almost an even surface here, I'm gonna try doing just one big board of one inch. So this was half inch. Now I'm gonna put one inch over top of that. It seems like it will work if I hold this up here and press on it. I feel like there's quite a bit of surface area to hold. 
And then of course our ceiling is going to, our wooden panels are going to run under here which will hold it up as well once I put a furring strip across here. Um, so I think this will work, but that's our plan. It'll be a total of about an inch and a half of poly iso board up there, which I think will be pretty good. Um, we're going to lose some headroom, and I know a lot of people try to keep the headroom, but I've got plenty of space, and I'm taller than Allison, so I'm not too concerned about it coming to about right here. I know the ceiling's the place you got, you lose the most heat and you get the most heat, so um, it's really important to do a good job there, so I think this will work. And ta-da! We took the wooden post down and it still holds up just fine. I think it's gonna work. So that uh, this is the adhesive we used. And that stuff seemed to work great. What is up guys? I'm working on the bed frame alone today, so excuse the camera angle, I'm gonna do my best. I wanna show you the trick that I found that works best for marking these. So like I've said, I wanted to not have to screw into my van, so these are all attached to rivet nut inserts. Um, they're just screws, they're just short ones right now. I've got longer ones that I'm going to try and put through here and through this wood into there, so I'm bolting these as extra support for the bed frame. I've already done three of them um, halfway decently. It's really difficult to thread a three inch uh, screw through multiple pieces of wood and into a tiny little number 10 rivet nut so uh, it's difficult but the process that I found best is I go ahead and put some screws in first and then I put this up against it and hit it with a hammer so let me show you what that looks like um, so I'm gonna place the wood exactly where I want it get it exact like that. Then I'm going to try and keep it in the same location as much as I can. I'm going to go over each one of those uh, screw heads and I'm just going to tap it with the hammer a few times and it should leave some indented marks where I need to screw. So let's try. So now see if I can see this on the camera. Let me uh, change the focus. See? These are the other ones I've done. I've been screwing uh, four holes at least, or three in, but I've only been able to get two in. And this one won't even go all the way in. I think the rivet nut on the back side is like stripped or pulled out. It's still super solid, um, but I'm gonna have to figure that out. If I come back here, by the way, our uh, leak looks a lot better today. I think that color there is from the mild, uh, mold prevention spray that I put on there. I think because it changed the color of the wood a little bit. So I think that's just where it kind of ran to from the water. But we're going to keep watching it. Anyway, that side I was able to get three of them. One of them's partially sticking out though, just like over there. So I might have to cut that. I'm not sure. Over here, I just got two, but they are in really well, top and bottom. So even though I've been drilling uh, three or four holes to match up with rivet nuts, if I can get two or three in, I'm happy because it's super strong. Um, I'll probably put some other finisher nails or something in it. I don't know yet, but this is working, so I'm gonna keep going. So, fingers crossed that this one is easiest. Typically, that's how these projects work. When you start your first one, not knowing exactly how you're gonna do it, it doesn't work very well. But by the time you do your uh, fourth, or by the time you're almost done with the project, I should say, you're really good at it. So I can see why a lot of people just jump right into building a second van. The experience that I've gotten doing this one, my goodness. So my little system here is just a three inch, um, sorry, 
a 3 inch number 10 machine screw with a number 10 washer. That's all I'm doing. Um, here we go, we've got four. Let's hope we can at least get two of these in. I'm going to start with the top one. Line it up. So far all of them fit in the first hole. But now can I get some of them into the rivet nut inserts? That's the real question. Well, that one's caught on something. It's just spinning. I. I have a feeling the rivet nut came loose. I don't think I did some of them tight enough. I think it came loose, so it's just spinning in there instead of going in. I have no way to access it. So I think this one's a bust. Maybe I can get the bottom one in still. I now have four corner posts. Still got a lot to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on the next project, which will be bolting this in. This is not bolted on right now. Thank you.